Today on the Box Break Podcast, I'm checking out Zendikar Revisited Secret Lair, and I'm going to give you my opinion on if I think Secret Lairs are a good investment or not. So let's get right into it on the Box Break Podcast. What is up and what is good and what is going on? You are watching slash listening to the fastest growing financial podcast based on cardboard pictures of cartoons. So today on this December the 4th, 2020, I... I'm going to open this Secret Lair Drop Series Showcase Zendikar Revisited Foil Edition. Now, normally on the Box Break Podcast, I open up booster packs from sponsored patrons of mine, and they will receive the cards. But sometimes I want to do a video to talk about products in general, right? Sometimes I just want to think about you know, the markets in general, things, products that I find interesting. And I think that secret layers are now over a year old and we have enough data where it's worth talking about. Because earlier on in secret layers life spans, they were, everyone had thoughts about what they were going to be. There's some people thought they were going to be the end of the game. Oh my God, Watsies, they're selling direct to consumer. Ah! And you know, or there were some people who were like, listen, it's fine. There were some people, these are just so stupid. I don't like them. And there were a lot of people who thought that they were cool. Usually the people who were stupid were much, much, much louder. But now I like to take an approach where, listen, I wait and see, let's see what there is. And I just want to talk about secret layers in general as an investment. This is, of course, the Box Break Podcast. We host this podcast. I host this podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 o'clock p.m. Here, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check out the Instagram link in the description below, the Twitter, the Twitch, and all of the stuff below. And while we're doing that, let's get right into this secret layer drop series, and I will be discussing my my thoughts on if these are good investments now in order to say whether or not i think that this is a good investment i need to first describe what my opinion of an investment is you know in the raw the investment means you know something you buy to make money when i think of an investment versus a flip though in my more modern approach right in a more you know nuanced approach than just say oh you're just doing it to make money i like to think of it in a long term right Something that if I were to buy this today, in X amount of years, will I have seen X amount of return compounded and adjusted for inflation over time? That's what I look for when I look for a investable. And I believe that cards and collectibles are investments. I wouldn't have a YouTube channel talking about it if I didn't believe that. Correct? Right. So that makes a bit of sense. I will say that as far as an investment goes, secret layers are not good, period. I will come out and say that these are not good investments, right? Now, but you could say, hey, you have all of these. You know, you bought these. Now, let me explain what I was doing for a while with secret layers. And this isn't anything crazy or special. You know, I don't think that this makes me a particularly unique person in this. A lot of people were, just people weren't talking about it as much, right? Right. And the reason why is what I was doing was I would just buy the maximum allocation. I would wait the month at the time or maybe three months at the time. And then I would buy the I would just resell all of them until I got my money back and the rest were free. So normally what it would do, like with the Thero Stargazer ones, I got pretty lucky is I would buy the 30 I was allowed. I would sell enough of them and the rest I could do whatever with. I could punt them across the room for all I care because I have already made my money back on them, right? Now, all the secret layers come with a random planeswalker from War of the Spark. I'm personally bored of these. I think that I wish they would go to something new, but whatever they exist. I know can get. I think it's either Nissa or Nahiri. So it's a Nissa who shakes the world. These things were really cool at first. They are a little bit played out by now for sure, right? Probably going to just do some sort of giveaway with that. Now, 
right? As an investment, I look at Secret Lairs very similar to the way that I looked at the From the Vault series, right? I think that's a better comparison. People want to compare Secret Lairs to something. I think the only thing I could really compare it to is like a From the Vault, where you're getting a select amount of cards, where people say, oh, they're selling direct to market, they're like selling singles. It's like, well, in theory, I think so was From the Vault, right? It's just they were just selling singles for $4 a piece or whatever they were at the time, right? And MSRP and From the Vault are usually $40. There would be 10 cards. Boom. You get yourself, you know, $4 a card. So to me, it's the same thing as I'm selling singles, right, when it was From the Vault. And I stand by, even though some of those From the Vaults have been good returns and good investments, I stand by I don't like them. And the reason why is I think the gambler's premium is something that people underestimate when it comes to an investment in a card, right? I only recommend people invest, which means that you're going to buy it and you're willing to hold it for at least five years. I say you don't spend money on cards that you can't afford and to lose entirely, right? So what I say is that it's, if it's a single, it has to be on the reserve list. I don't believe in the pseudo reserve list that some people talk about. I don't believe... Ugh. I don't believe in the, you know, oh, they, they can never reprint this again. Trust me. If Wizards, if it's not on the reserve list and Wizards of the Coast still has rights to the artwork, they will be reprinted. They're going to reprint them. Nothing is safe unless it is on the reserve list. And there are people who argue that even the reserve list isn't safe. I think that Wizards of the Coast would have to do with lines and lines of cocaine in order to get rid of the reserve list. It is not a going to ever happen. We really, as a community-ish, we should probably just stop talking about it right so just looking at the cards from this here i got the foil avenger of zendikar there is a very clear i don't know if it's coming in on the camera print line on this these are already a little curled nothing too bad there then we have a domination angel pretty admonition angel excuse me pretty nice card there the, the artworks on these are beautiful these are beautiful cards Royal Elemental, beautiful card. You know, these are all Commander-style staples. Zulaport, Cutthroat, right? Very nice. And, of course, Warren Instigator, which was one of the most hyped-up cards at the time of release of the original Zendikar. So, to me, these secret lairs as investments, I don't like cards that don't have a randomness to them. I don't like products that you know what you're getting. I don't like investing in dual decks. I'm not a huge fan, although I do have some of the commander decks. I know some people like commander, and they do do well. However, to me, just I, it never really tickled my fancy. I'm like, I could spend the $40 a deck or whatever it is on that, or I could spend the $80 and buy a bunch, or I could just buy the booster boxes, and I think that they'll tend to the booster box I have more faith in over time. They already reprint the full commander decks in anthology. You know, I'm not a big proponent of the of the uh, of just the pre-constructed stuff. You know what you're getting. Commander maybe is a little different because you could always just play the deck out and it's kind of cool. You know, but to me, I like things that have a level of randomness where you open a pack and you don't know what you're gonna get. So there's always a premium to that, a boost and the supply of them will always tank over time. So I'm really not a big proponent of these as investments. So why do I buy them? Well, fun fact, I actually do play the game. I know I've sound, I just sit here and talk, but I do have a cube. I had that Avenger of Zendikar will go in, uh, which is the reason I really got this. I'm going to just probably sell these as singles and just try to get the Avenger of Zendikar as close to free as possible because the Avenger of Zendikar is in my cube. So that's why I bought it. You know, just full disclosure. You know, all these other stuff, I bought them just to, you know, I wanted some of the cards, so I tried to buy more of them. That way, I because if you remember back on my episode about how to get cards for free, I said if you buy more than one and you can sell some of the profit, they become free. You know, so I'm going to try to at least recoup as much of this as possible, and sometimes it doesn't work out, right? Sometimes it does not work out. The cards don't appreciate over time. And, you know, it just doesn't really work in your favor. But I really, when it comes to secret lairs, now that the cat's out of the bag, that everyone knows you can just buy the product and you can just flip them, you know, and just try to make your money back on it, right? And it's really like, I, I to me, buy the ones you want. 
you know, the new super drops, they're cool. But if a summer super drop didn't make a ton of money, none of these will. Everyone understands it. They're cool. They're neat. But, you know, wouldn't recommend buying them to hold on to long term at all. I would recommend just get the ones you want. They're fun if you want to play with, but don't sit here and think that these are going to be some huge cash avenue. So with that, thanks everyone for watching. I do appreciate it. If you would like the video, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We'll have more content coming up very soon. Appreciate it very much. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day.